In today's video, we're going to go over seven common mistakes that you should avoid when starting out shooting insects in macro photography. Let's jump in. Hello and welcome to another video. So in today's video, we're talking about five common mistakes people make when starting out in macro photography. Two of these, uh, so I've got seven altogether, but two of them aren't really mistakes. They well, they could be conceived as mistakes, I suppose. You judge for the end. At the end, I'll pop them on. And one third bonus one. So there'll be eight mistakes, really. Um, one of them is has come from my son, who I taught macro photography to recently for his GCSEs. And he's got some really nice images. I'll pop pop one up here, I don't know if I've showed it before. Um, but the, that mistake has come from him, I asked him what he thought was a mistake when learning macro photography. So that last mistake will come from uh, my son. So without further ado, let's jump in and get on to the first mistake. The first mistake is depth of field. Now, obviously we all like the f2.8 end of the lens where it gives you that nice blurred background but in macro photography we want to go somewhere in the middle of the range so f11 f16 whatever's best for your camera or for your uh, lens whichever one gives you the the best image and the reason for that is because the depth of field in macro photography is so small it gets really small in portrait photography if you're doing portraits for example you can focus and get most of the face in or you know like a good good portion of the face in whereas macro photography you're going to get like the sliver of like a fly's wing not even in focus like you're going to get like the tip of it in focus and it's going to be that bad so you want to go f f11 say f15 and that's going to give you a nice not it's not going to get the whole insect in focus but depending on what you're shooting it's going to get a good a good portion of it in focus okay the next mistake is shooting with the right light now it's quite tempting to go out and just think well the sunlight will be fine like um today is it's okay it's it's the sun's out but it's a bit overcast so we've got some direct sunlight but it's not great but what we've got to remember with macro is the closer you get to something the smaller that we shoot with macro the more light we need to properly illuminate our subject. Now there's a couple of options you can use to counter that, which is flash, on-camera flash, or off-camera flash. Now on-camera flash produces a light that's very um, sort of studio sort of thing. You're gonna get the, the catch light in their eyes. So it's gonna be quite portrait, portrait, can't even say the word, a portraiture type light. Whereas off camera, you're going to be above and you're going to get some nice shadows. You're going to get, you're, you're going to get some nice um, different looking images rather than straight on where everything's illuminated. So playing around with the light, um, I, I shoot both. I've got a ring flash that goes on the front of the lens and then I've got an off camera flash, which is what I'm using today. Um, and I, I like to, but there's certain situations where some can look good and some can look bad. So just playing around with that and getting the right light to illuminate your subject. So never shoot macro photography. I, I don't ever shoot in just sunlight um, unless you're going to diffuse the light somehow with maybe a soft box or have like a reflector or something that you can use to sort of take off that harshness of the light. Um, always try and go flash. Okay, so the next one would be shooting angles. So this angle that I'm shooting from now, it looks completely different to what you're normally used to seeing. You're normally used to seeing it straight on. A lot of macro photographers, a lot of a lot of people that do macro photographers, photography will do a dead straight down shot of something or a dead level shot of something, those two main ones. But if you can get under it, shoot up, or if you can get, say, uh, at the front of it, so it's like dead straight on, but then below it, so you get shooting up there. So just playing around with angles and just making the photo work for you. So don't don't produce the same angles that everybody produces. Try and get something interesting move things around shoot through things or you know around things so you've got something in front of your picture when you do that it will just make that picture more interesting have something else in the frame maybe you know play around with it and just see what you can come up with but don't just shoot the top down dead straight on normal stuff they look good don't get me wrong insects they always look good no matter what angle you shoot them at but just try and play around with the different types of angles and get a bit lower maybe get a bit you know sort of don't come top down come a little bit further down play around yeah, that's my next one. One of the one of the mistakes that people often do is they use the autofocus on the camera. Now, 
that's obviously understandable as to why you'd think that the autofocus would be good. But with such shallow depths of field, the focus can hunt and it can just try and keep finding the focus point because it doesn't know where it needs to focus to. So it will, it will look all over the frame and it can you can miss your shots like that. Um, the other part of the focus, well, obviously you can manually focus, but even that can be quite tricky to get in, in the right place. Now, if you're shooting with an onboard flash, you could use that option. If you're using an off camera flash like I'm using today, so an off camera flash, I haven't got a free hand to focus. So the easiest way to combat that is turn your focus ring all the way to the right so you're at your closest focus in distance. And then when you hold this to where you want it, and then all you can do is just rock backwards and forwards ever so slightly. And because your focal plane is so small, that's just gonna adjust your focus. And I think that's probably the easiest way to get a good focus without autofocus missing the shot or having to prop this somewhere it's just easy to freehand it when you've got just these two things in your hand and you can get the shot that you need and the last of the five uh, common mistakes is not focusing on the eye of the subject that's your window into their soul if you like and you know it's same with portrait photography the eye's got to be in focus that's the thing that's got to be in focus obviously artistic differences and you know creative differences and whatnot but generally the eye should be in focus so trying to get that eye as tack sharp as you can is going to make your image look a lot more impressive so here's the bonus tip if you see a insect on a leaf or a branch wherever it is spider maybe um, take as many photos as you need to get the photo that you want and then when you finish taking the photos start playing with your subject so Move it around. If it's on a leaf, move the leaf. And you'll find that they're quite, I'll show you this insect here, look. They're quite forgiving as to when you move them around. Um, I haven't got my glasses on, so I can't see if this is in the shot. Is it there? I don't know, I'll just shoot wide. Hopefully you can see it. But you can see there's an insect here, look. Move this leaf around. I can get shoot I can shoot this thing lower and it's not really bothered by me um, some will be some won't be but if you if you take your shot and you finish taking your shot why not try and move that insect to why not try and move that insect to a better location so for example if you're photographing a spider and the spider's on the leaf you can take broken me in there you can take that photo and then prod him with a little stick just move him you know tap his legs a little bit not tap but you know just gently um, try and move him a little bit and then what it will do is it will he might move to the end of the leaf and put his feet over the leaf and make an interesting thing you can shoot from down below and then shoot up to the spider which will give it a much more interesting um, look okay so the final tip well, not final because I've got my son's one coming up, but the final one of mine is remembering your background. So when you're taking a photo of something that's micro, having a few twigs and leaves in the background can take the focus off of your subject. So just remembering what it is that's behind can make all the difference. So the last mistake comes from my son, which, um, as I said earlier in the video, he is doing his GCSEs and I taught him some macro photography. So I asked him what he thought was a mistake that he, th he felt when he was doing it, um, getting into macro photography that he could have done better or that he felt that he did wrong. And his uh, tip was, or tip, mistake, his mistake was he, he wasn't patient enough. And this is basically, um, you, you're gonna go out and you're gonna get sometimes no images and sometimes you're gonna get some great images. And we went out a couple of times. We went out, uh, the first time we went out for about an hour and we got about four, I wanna say four or five images, I can't remember which. Um, and then the second time we went out, we went out um, for probably about another hour, I would say about an hour. And we got four or five different insects, a couple of good images though. Um, so, you know, having a bit of patience and allowing insects to come to you as well, I would add to that. Um, just because when you're walking through, if you imagine you're walking through a wood, things are flying around you all the time, insects are moving, and as you walk past stuff, it moves, and you're not going to catch a fly landing on a, a, a piece of 
a leaf, a piece of a leaf. Uh, you're not going to get a fly landing on a leaf um, just as you're walking past and just happen to glance at it. You're going to have to stop and wait and just set up somewhere. Like this was the perfect example, and this is why I chose to do this. I've did all the all the images you see today are taken on this tiny little shrub bush, whatever this is, and all the flies came to me. Now I did shower this morning. Um, that's probably why my hair's so fluffy today. I don't know if I did. I mention have I mentioned that I've stopped growing this. I stopped growing it? No, I didn't. Um, I stopped cutting it about six months ago. Um, don't ask me why, I just did. So it's a bit bouffanty. Um, yeah, so I, I have showered, so the flies aren't coming to me because I smell. Um, <laughs> they're coming to me because it's just a natural thing. They just come to the bushes. So, you know, have a bit of patience. Wait for the, um, wait for the opportunity and set yourself up somewhere and just sit around and wait. And that's... that genuinely will they will genuinely come to you um obviously if you're looking for specific insects then obviously you need to go to specific locations but generally if you sit around long enough in nature there's thousands of things around you you just gotta look uh, so that's it for another video so hopefully you uh, enjoyed it and if you did please do consider giving it a thumbs up really do appreciate that and thank you so much for watching if you've made it this far into the video uh, it's always appreciated and if you haven't already subscribed because i know 20 no 80, 90, 80 or 90 percent of my viewers aren't subscribed which is crazy um how are you going to get new videos like this this is an awesome video so you know hit that bell icon and get notified when uh, new videos drop and i will catch you on the next one